Smokey Eunuch built something no one could explain. A race car that ran in reverse, with an engine that spun the wrong way and gears that seemed to defy logic. And somehow it worked. Some called it genius. Others called it impossible. Decades later, the real reason behind Smokey's backwards car still feels like a secret the racetrack never meant to reveal. A reason that will blow your mind. The reverse torque special emerged from an old idea in American oval track racing. Reverse engine rotation held almost mystical appeal among mechanics and engineers. The theory seemed simple. When a conventional engine accelerates hard, torque reaction transfers weight to the right side of the vehicle. On left turn oval tracks, weight already shifts right during cornering. This double loading effect compresses the right side suspension while unloading the left. Unick described the concept in his autobiography, Best Damn Garage in Town. He wrote, Look, if you've got a front engine car with rear wheel drive, open the door and leave it wide open, and then start engine without putting it into gear. Goose the motor good. Notice how driver's door raises up and right side of car goes down. This conversation is for circle track left hand turns only. With conventional engine rotation, you're transferring weight to the right side of the car. When you turn left, the weight goes there anyway. The idea of reverse rotation is when you accelerate hard, the weight comes to the left front and left rear and pulls weight off of the right front. The physics behind this theory proved more complex than Unix's explanation suggested. When an engine accelerates rotating masses internally, reaction forces attempt to roll the chassis in the opposite direction. A conventional clockwise rotating engine causes the chassis to roll counterclockwise. During hard acceleration in neutral with no load, this reaction becomes visible. The phenomenon is called engine torque reaction. However, when the engine connects to the drivetrain and wheels contact pavement, different forces dominate. The majority of engine torque transfers through the output shaft to the rear axle. The axle housing then becomes the critical component. In vehicles with live rear axles, drive torque creates what engineers call a jacking couple. This force attempts to rotate the entire axle housing around its centerline. Sprint cars experienced this effect dramatically. These vehicles featured live rear axles with gear ratios as steep as 6 to 1. The massive torque multiplication through the drivetrain created substantial axle housing rotation. 15 years before modern analysis, Sprint car teams began experimenting with reverse rotation engines. The goal was identical to Unix Indianapolis project. Transfer weight to the inside rear tyre rather than the outside during acceleration out of turns. The mechanical implementation required several specialised components. Standard engines rotate clockwise when viewed from the front. To reverse this, Unic needed a reversed starter motor, reverse distributor drive, and modified cam timing. The flywheel and clutch assembly also required reversal. Most critically, the ring and pinion gears in the rear axle needed flipping to maintain forward vehicle motion. Halibrand manufactured quick change rear axles for Curtis Roadsters during this period. These units allowed rapid gear ratio changes at the track. Halibrand also offered mirror image units with the ring gear positioned on the right side instead of the left. These front QC units were originally designed for front wheel drive and four wheel drive racing vehicles. The components were commercially available, not custom fabrications. Tommy Ivo's four wheel drive four-engine Buick Showboat Dragster utilised a Halibrand front QC unit to drive the front wheels. Current racing axle suppliers continue offering components necessary for reverse rotation builds. Any skilled mechanic with access to proper parts could assemble a reverse rotation drivetrain. 
Unic possessed both the mechanical knowledge and competitive drive to attempt such an unconventional approach. The 1959 Indianapolis 500 provided the testing ground. Veteran driver Dwayne Carter piloted the reverse torque special. The car qualified 12th in the field, demonstrating competitive pace. During the 500 mile race, Carter finished 7th. The car averaged over 133 miles per hour for the full distance. Performance matched or exceeded conventional front engine roadsters of the period. Despite respectable results, Unic never built another reverse torque special. His successive Indianapolis attempts utilised conventional rotation. No other major constructor adopted the concept. This abandonment raises questions about the actual benefits observed during competition. Modern engineering analysis reveals why the concept showed limited practical advantage. When an engine operates under load rather than free revving, most torque reacts through the drivetrain. Inertial torque from accelerating internal rotating masses becomes negligible compared to torque transmitted through the output shaft. The engine mounts experience minimal twisting force during steady state operation or gradual acceleration. The critical torque reaction occurs at the rear axle housing. On vehicles with solid rear axles, drive torque creates forces attempting to rotate the housing. These forces transfer to the chassis through suspension links and shock absorbers. The direction of this rotation depends on the direction of axle rotation, not engine rotation. Reversing engine rotation while maintaining forward vehicle motion requires reversing the final drive ratio. This simply flips which side of the vehicle experiences axle housing lift. A conventional setup lifts the right rear. A reversed setup lifts the left rear. During left hand turns on oval tracks, the conventional setup loads the outside tyre that already carries more weight from cornering forces. The reverse setup attempts to load the inside tyre. The theoretical advantage emerges during corner exit acceleration. If axle torque can transfer weight to the inside rear tyre, that tyre gains traction. Simultaneously, weight transfers off the outside rear tyre. This effect could theoretically improve vehicle rotation and reduce understeer. However, the magnitude of this weight transfer proved small compared to aerodynamic loading and suspension geometry effects. Sprint cars that adopted reverse rotation engines reported mixed results. Some teams claimed improved handling during acceleration out of corners. Others found no measurable benefit. Most teams eventually returned to conventional rotation as engine technology advanced. Modern sprint cars universally employ standard clockwise rotation with sophisticated suspension tuning to manage weight transfer. E contemporary road racing cars and modern race cars with independent rear suspension experience different dynamics entirely. Independent suspension eliminates the solid axle housing. The differential housing bolts rigidly to the chassis. Axle shafts articulate through universal joints or constant velocity joints. Lateral torque reaction from the axle housing does not exist. Weight transfer occurs purely through suspension links and shock absorbers based on acceleration forces and aerodynamic loading. The reverse torque special's actual purpose becomes clearer through this mechanical analysis. Unic sought to counteract the specific problem of solid rear axle torque reaction on oval tracks. He correctly identified that conventional drivetrains loaded the outside rear tyre during corner exit acceleration. Reversing the drivetrain theoretically shifted this loading to the inside tyre. The implementation was mechanically sound using available components. The limited adoption and eventual abandonment suggest the practical benefits did not justify the complexity. Reverse rotation engines required custom parts, specialised maintenance and offered limited transferability between different tracks. 
teams could achieve similar or better results through conventional suspension tuning, tyre selection and aerodynamic adjustment. The cost-benefit analysis favoured conventional approaches. Modern drag racing reveals another aspect of drivetrain torque management. Top fuel dragsters generate approximately 11,000 horsepower. During launch, rear tyre growth from centrifugal force can exceed 4 inches in diameter. Wheel speed reaches 8,000 rpm or higher. The forces involved dwarf anything experienced in oval track racing. Drag racers combat drivetrain stress through multiple strategies. Torque converter drives combine automatic transmission, torque converters, with manual transmissions. This technology allows smooth power application while maintaining gear selection control. Bruno Massel Sr. developed early converter drive systems in 1989. He won Supercomp at the NHRA Super Nationals using a billet prototype in his car. Converter drives work by creating a temporary separation between the engine and transmission during the initial moments of acceleration. When a driver launches off the line, the torque converter multiplies the engine's output torque while allowing a controlled amount of slippage. This system prevents violent mechanical shocks that could damage gears or twist drive shafts under sudden power delivery. Once the car builds speed, the converter gradually locks up, linking the engine directly to the transmission for efficient power transfer. This balance between flexibility and direct drive is why converter drives have become a key part of modern drag racing technology. Today, manufacturers like Quick Drive and Lenko refine and produce high-performance converter drive systems used in elite racing categories such as Top Alcohol, Pro Mod, Top Sportsman and Competition Eliminator. These systems allow racers to apply enormous horsepower without instantly breaking traction or destroying drivetrain components. In a world where 1000 horsepower engines are the norm, this kind of technology isn't just helpful, it's essential. The goal is smooth power management, enough slip to absorb shock loads, but not so much that the car loses speed. Wheel hop, another notorious issue in racing, exposes why smoky Unix reverse torque special was decades ahead of its time. Wheel hop occurs when the tyres lose and regain traction rapidly in a repeating cycle, causing the rear axle to bounce violently. This sudden oscillation sends shockwaves through the drivetrain, stressing every connected part, from the transmission to the differential. The more rigid the connection between the wheels, the worse the problem becomes. Cars with solid rear axles suffer most because both wheels react together, transmitting harsh vibrations through the entire frame. In contrast, vehicles with independent suspension can isolate each wheel's motion, softening the impact and keeping the chassis more stable. Smoky Unix car tackled this instability from another angle entirely. The reverse torque special sought to even out how weight shifted between the rear tyres under acceleration. By redirecting load toward the inside tyre instead of overloading the outside one, Unix hoped to reduce traction loss. Balanced tyre loading means more predictable grip, smoother acceleration and fewer sudden snaps in handling. For a driver like Dwayne Carter running at Indianapolis, that balance could be the difference between maintaining control and spinning out. The reverse torque special's design philosophy emphasised stability. A stable drivetrain helps the driver feel what the car is doing and react faster. In traditional setups, when a car accelerates out of a left-hand turn, torque naturally loads the outside rear tyre. This causes the inside tyre to lift slightly, creating uneven traction. The result is a repeating cycle of oversteer and correction, what racers call a feedback loop. Drivers have to constantly modulate throttle to avoid spinning the car, especially during corner exit. That constant balancing act costs valuable fractions of a second per lap. By flipping the direction of engine rotation, 
Unix tried to reverse that feedback pattern. Instead of unloading the inside tyre, the reverse torque special pressed it harder into the track. This theoretically let the car power out of corners earlier and with greater confidence. If the car could maintain traction across both tyres, Carter could accelerate sooner, keep the car planted and exit turns with higher speed.